my bonds, my bonnets. We definitely in the building because we are the best. And you should definitely know the rest. So with that being said, I want to know, how's everyone day today? I hope everyone day is going a-okay. Because me, myself, personally, my day is going, hmm, things that make you go, hmm. You see what I'm saying? So with that being said, if you ain't checked out them Operation Drills, please run through them Operation Drills. Hit that subscribe button and you know what else to do. Now today, you guys, on the segment of Operation Drill, we have none other than Big Mike. Didn't I tell you that Mr. Big Mike was going to be on none other than DJ U, you go crazy. DJ U, you go crazy. Now Mr. DJ U has none other than Big Mike on the stand today. Well, not on the stand, in the interview room. See what I'm saying, you guys? And guess what, you guys? I was right about Mr. Big Mike that was going to want to interview him and all that. But you know, that's common sense that everybody was going to want to interview him because he was King Von's rapper. You see what I'm saying? But one thing I could say as of right now that I wasn't right about as of now, but I did say Mr. Mike was going to come out and get his DJU interviews and things like that and be right along with the play. You feel what I'm saying? But this is the first interview. I think I seen another one, another piece of the interview, but I didn't look at it. I think I seen it, um, a video or DJU somewhere, and I was like, oh, Big Mike is on it. I think it was DJU. But this is the first interview that I watched of Big Mike's. And one thing I can say, you guys, and Mr. DJU as well. Mr. DJU, check this out, Mr. DJU Jazz, because I know that you are FM. You see what I'm saying, brother? It doesn't mean that I have a problem with you because I don't know you, so it's only kind common sense for me to don't have a problem with you if I don't know you. You see what I'm saying? It's just that you's an FM, but guess what, Mr. FM? I still could give you your props when your props is due. Now, this video right here, I kind of liked it, this video. You know why I kind of liked it, this video? Because Mr. Mike sat on there and he talked um, with some sense. You see what I'm saying? And I'm glad Mr. Mike didn't go along with the program and things of that nature like that, talking about drilling and this person did that and this person did that. You see, he talked about um, oh. You feel me? And I'm glad that he let everybody know that a lot of these guys wasn't even around when Odie lost his life. And this is what I've been trying to tell you guys the whole time. This is what I'm telling you. I watched the whole play go down on the shorties in the rack. Because you know why? This is why I tell you. I was right there when it all was going down. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? I have another video down there as well talking about this too. I can tell you the exact spot I was standing at when Mr. Odie Perry lost his life. I was standing on 61st in normal and there was a lot of us standing out there i forgot what we was doing we was doing something that day it was one of the guys day or something like that but it was a lot of us out there and then some of the guys came down there and said Odie lost his life and um they just killed Odie over by old block the reason why i was so familiar with it because um one of the sisters from the block her little sister dates Odie's brother i'm gonna say her name but they was like um, you know, I was like, who just got killed? And they was like, Wuwapi Bam's brother, the one that Wuwapi Bam date. And then I was like, oh, yeah, Wuwapi. But Odie's brother, I was cool with him. You see what I'm saying? I didn't know him that long. I probably knew Odie's brother for probably a year. I probably knew Odie's brother for probably a year. I was in work release. So he used to, every all the little events and everything we used to do, everything we did on the block, he was on the block. He was on our block every day. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And to make a long story short, him and his girl used to always be tussling and <laughs> getting into the arguments and stuff. And I used to always sit him back and just talk to him. You see what I'm saying? And be like, man, why y'all always getting into it? But they loved each other, though. You know, that's here nor there. You know, it's just young relationships that I go. But I didn't know Odie, but I sort of knew his little brother. And this is why I was so familiar with the day when Odie lost his life. Because we all jumped in cars and we all went down there. And this is why I was telling y'all it was a woman that was at the bus stop right there when Odie got shot down. Oh, either she she was no, she wasn't pregnant. Either she was pregnant, but I'm almost sure that she just had a baby with her. I don't know if the baby was in the stroller or what, but I know she had a child with her when Odie was shot right by the bus stop. And here's the other crazy part of it. And this is another reason why I like this video that Mike's um 
this this interview Mike's doing because Mike's telling the truth because believe it or not, and you can check around. You can ask anybody that you want to ask. Believe it or not, at this time, y'all, I was on work release on the west side, right? And I was on work release and where I was paroled to on work release, we had a daycare center. And all the children from the daycare was from, guess where? Old Block. This is what I'm telling you. I used to drop these little kids off in Old Block. You see what I'm saying? Every day I had to go pick kids up from Old Block and drop them off. And where I was at was right in the middle of STL and all of this gyro and old block and all this. That's why I tell you, like every last, almost every last one of them bodies, y'all, I was around for it. You see what I'm saying? In the vicinity, blocks away. Because you know, once someone lose their life, everyone in that vicinity is going to know. You see what I'm saying? I remember when Jay Money lost his life. Jay Money was in a black Range Rover. I remember when P5 lost his life. I went up there on Cottage Grove. I was standing on Cottage Grove because um, they killed Lil B like right there. And they had that whole little lot by St. Lawrence and all that blocked off. It was basically blocked off the Cottage Grove. But on, right on the side, like by the way, where, the train, where the train's going all that. On the, um, if you're coming from cottage on the left hand side, with the fact that's the picture that they show on the news, and you see everybody standing over in that field right there, like basically um, squaring off with the cops. You see what I'm saying? It was all right there. Duck them all those out there, the whole STL, all of that. You see what I'm saying? They always out there. I remember like what's the name got killed probably like two blocks from two blocks from um from my house. I promise you, I, I promise to God, y'all. I remember when little Taekwon got killed. It, it probably wasn't even two blocks, but he got killed. It, they was in the in the alley because I remember the the little kid just got killed down there. Walking. It was Taekwon. You see what I'm saying? Like every last one of them bodies, even that body that they got pre boy on, even the body pre boy on. The shorty that allegedly drilled the shorty out for the cush. You see what I'm saying? Man, I remember every last one of them. The white, white body. Every last one of them. You see, this is when it started all jumping off. This is what I was telling y'all. In 2012 is when it all jumped off and, and Chief Keith got the deal. And then it just went to another level. See y'all, on everything I love, like, I was right in the midst of all these bodies, man. The JoJo, every last one of them. The Fats, every last one of them, y'all. L.A. Capone, I told you, I was almost at the L.A. Capone reunion that day. I was finna take D.D. and money bags and them up there. They wind up, they go up there, and they didn't both got shot. Listen, y'all, I'm out there for all the stuff, and I'm thinking, like, I kept saying that, y'all, this is before I was a YouTuber and everything, I kept saying, man, something ain't right, man. Something ain't right, because, listen, like, it seemed like every one of the shorties, I used to, Get up on his music and I'll be like, dang, he decent. Ooh, I'm listening to him. Next thing you know, he dead. Boom, drilled out. I'm like, what? What? Something ain't right, y'all. It's something crazy going on in the rack. You see what I'm saying? And this is when these whole this whole plan was put together with these people uh, um putting Chicago in the drill rap in the, in the paint. You feel what I'm saying? You can't tell me it wasn't a play on the Chicago and drill rap. This is why you had all these people that wasn't from Chicago, people from Detroit, California. Texas, all over these places, like this talking all this stuff about Chicago and who's the drillers and who's the killers and all this. You see what I'm saying? Because they was all police and informants and stuff, and they was putting this narrative together on social media, you see? And it kind of worked for them. It did work because you got a lot of children that got drilled out for things that they wasn't supposed to get drilled out for. This is why my Operation Drill is so important to let a lot of the mothers know in the rack and a lot of the youth and just people from Chicago, period, and people from anywhere who thought that these youth can be running around with five, six, seven murders and be on social media talking about it. No, it was a systematic, strategic um, play. It was a whole strategic, designed play. You see what I'm saying? It was systematically, strategically designed. You feel me? And this is why we're going through a problem now with all these unsolved bodies. You feel me? But all these bodies was allegedly counted for, y'all. But then guess what? After the ones that they put them on, after they died, and it just wasn't enough for them to keep putting them on other people and stuff like that. It wasn't enough savages that was going to keep falling for that mess. You feel me? So guess what? They come back and come back around and put the body on somebody else. Another shorty drilled out for it. You see what I'm saying? Or locked up or incarcerated for it. You see, locked up, incarcerated for these bodies. You feel me? And guess what, y'all? None of these bodies are fat checked. You see what I'm saying? None of these bodies, they have no 100% evidence. None of these bodies is beyond a reasonable doubt. You see what I'm saying? None of them. Not now, last one of these bodies that they got. None of these 
children if they did or even if they in jail. You see what I'm saying? Basically charged because social media charged them. You see what I'm saying? This whole thing was put together and systematically designed. You feel me? Strategically. You feel me? <laughs> So it was like, I got two AKs tattoos on my stomach. So like, that's what I was on. So I was like, I want that shit to represent me. You feel me? It's my block, but I want it to represent me. But it ultimately just represent OD, you know what I'm saying? And, and, uh, and the picture, I don't know if it surfaced on the internet and shit. He had two 30s in his hand, a 357, and his uh, waistband and shit. I don't know if anybody got that one. So, but. Yeah, Mike, um, I know exactly what picture you're talking about because that picture is a um, vital piece of evidence in my cases in the Odie Perry and Tuca case. You see what I'm saying? This is the one I was telling y'all about. Y'all, that's the picture. Yes, Mike, if you look, it's all over social media. Mike, remember that picture from way back then? And look, Mike been in jail. That's what Mike said. I don't know if anybody got that picture. Mike going to be shocked when he see that picture all over social media. And guess why they got that picture, Mike? Somebody got it. And guess why they got it, Mike? This is what they framed Odie with on the Tuca murder. They said Odie became a highly rumored suspect because he was seen on photos with the 357. Remember I told y'all that Odie was holding two guns in his hand and he had the 357. Remember I said it was either in his pocket or in his, on his waistband. But I know he had the 357 on him down there to the side holding both the pistols. You see what I'm saying? And he had the 357 right down by his waistband. And this is what they used to frame Odie for the Tuca body. And then they turned around and framed K.I. for the Odie body, saying that she became a highly rumored suspect because she's in that picture where they're sitting on the porch and she has holding a 357 as well. You see what I'm saying? And, oh, Mike, they also used the 357 to lock O Block up on the duck body as well, you see? And if you don't know, Mike, the same vehicles that was used to take your buddy Odie Perry down was the same vehicle that was used to take your brother Wooski's buddy Tuka down. You see what I'm saying? And guess what, Mike? They both happened at a bus stop. So, Mike, if you know anything about a light colored Chevy Malibu, you see what I'm saying? Just please let the two bond know. You see what I'm saying? Because I would like to get real justice for your brother and my brother, Mr. O.D. Perry. You feel what I'm saying? O Block O. D. That's what I was going for. Yeah, but like. So tell us about OD. You and OD had a relationship? That was my brother. Like, before all these niggas came around, the, the, the King Vons, the Boss Tops, any of them niggas. Like, you know, it was it was niggas like me, Trey Five, you know what I'm saying, Platoon, White White, but like them, you know, them, them niggas who originally from Ola. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas who from Parkway got him. So it was like. It was like, OD, oh, they know them niggas really like that. Everybody that's running around right now, mercing it on him. Like, I see kids right now. You know what I'm saying? Them kids to me, they 18, 19, 20 right. years old, them kids. Right. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas running around with always alive, so you around here mercing on somebody you don't need to know. You know what I'm saying? Then you talking about some, you acting like, OD, oh, you ain't know what the fuck he did because you ain't never was with him. This is why I can rock with this interview right here. This is why I can rock with this interview because Big Mike is being genuine and he keeping it real, you see. And basically what I'm saying is he's not up there flaunting none of that. It's just like he said, like you merging in on Odie and you wasn't even with him. You merging in on to my son, you want to, you get like Odie get, but you've never been around Odie to see Odie get like nothing. You don't even know him. You feel what I'm saying? So basically what I'm saying, like Mike is talking like he's supposed to be talking like a real dude and he ain't up here dry snitching. You see what I'm saying? Or saying nothing like that or trying to get no clout making it seem like his block is this or his block is that or he's this or he's that and I like I kept it like basically saying like none of these guys don't know what Odie ever did because they ain't never been around Odie for these people all be on social media talking about Odie was this Odie was a killer Odie was this Odie was that Odie was this you see what I'm saying and Mike this is coming from all these bloggers and things like that see and this is why i can rock with this video because mike up there he just keeping it a band like you know he ain't dissing nobody or nothing like that he's just keeping it real because 
it'd be like a shock, like to people, like when you just came home from the joint, and you know, up in here, it's militant, you know, it's just, it's a shoot program, and everybody on point, you see what I'm saying, and then you come home, and you seeing a lot of stuff on social media, you see it, people tell me, I get crazy, like, oh, do you know, because it's a different code from where Mike just came from, Mike just came from behind the wall, so it's a code, and they're like, like butter and trenches and all this stuff, like, man, they will not be left man, you see what I'm saying, and this is the difference between the streets in jail, you feel what I'm saying? Because in the streets is lacking up now, you feel me? But guess what? Jail ain't gonna never sit up there and accept that. You see, for jail to ever accept that, they really gonna have to lock every jail down. And you know, in jail, people get still touched in PC, you feel me? This is why I say, like, he ain't dissing on none of them or nothing. He's just saying, like, man, y'all don't even really know him. <laughs> but you get like him and all this stuff like that, you feel me? So it ain't no diss. It's just real talk. It is what it is. And then at the same token, it ain't basically you ain't dry snitching on nobody. You feel me? That's not your man's OD. You see what I'm saying? The last thing anybody want to do is be jumping up there talking about what their man then did, their brother then did. You know what I'm saying? They people exposing stuff about bodies and stuff like that. And talking about he a hitter and all this. The only people who do that is these federal informant YouTubers. You ain't never been with them in no shootouts or nothing like that? Me? I've been there. Me and bro, you know, we've been through a lot. Like me, him, five. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the homies, my nigga Aaron, DP, you know what I'm saying? My niggas that I came up from that box with, you know what I'm saying? Them niggas who really know OD, like, you know what I'm saying? Tell a nigga to tell you, tell you his nickname. The nigga can't tell you his nickname, they don't know him. I'm glad you caught yourself, y'all. See, he had to realize. <laughs> See, Mike was in his own thinking he talked to one of the dudes in the joint. <laughs> in the joint, some stand-up guys. That's what Mike was like. Yeah, they ain't never been around OD. Like, to know what he did. You know, it'd be me, OD. You see what I'm saying? Then he catch himself. And he was like, you know, we've been through a lot, man. Me, Trey, Five, and all us. Who I mean, man, you know, he just keeping it real, though. And this is why I can vibe with this video. Because he's now basically up here pump faking and kicking it. And he's basically, um, to me, myself, personally, I don't see him him like basically going along with the narrative and y'all know what type of videos I do so basically as of right now you guys um Mr. Big Mike is cool you see what I'm saying because like I always tell y'all y'all if I um say things and if I if I'm wrong about it I have no problem with coming back um um recanting my statement or saying what's real you see what I'm saying or saying what's real because I'm always gonna keep it real now in my investigations and things like that you gotta understand if if I'm doing a case and I may do um something I may say okay well this happened right here this is why this happened and then down the line it may be because um this wasn't the reason why it happened it was something else what happened but you gotta understand that happens in investigations. Long as 95% of your investigation is on point, all the rest of the pieces of the puzzle will go together. You see what I'm saying? But those guys, as you can see, 95 to 99.9.9999% of their information is lies. And you only have a speck of truth. You see? And if you think I'm lying, just run through Operation Drills and I can show you better than I can tell you. You know what I'm saying? What his mama used to call him. You don't know if you ain't know what his mama used to call him. So why you out here saying his name like that, man? Y'all ass tweaking. Like y'all merching and all the men. Half of you niggas be lying when you merching. <laughs> Mike out, look Mike out, and then Mike, I see you, I see you, Mike, you trying to put a little toughness in there now, you trying to tell everybody they be lying when they merch well, I know a lot of them be lying when they merch it, Mike, you know, that's real, that's real, Mike, but I do want to see what they going to say, Mike, about the situation, about you telling no I want to see that too, you see what I'm saying, because I see basically, you, you you basically ain't think you ain't happening, Mike, ain't nobody finna be calling, you know, snitch out, Mike. I'm going to check around though, Mike, I'm definitely going to do another video on you, I'm just going to check around and, and, and um, I just want to hear you discuss that situation. You see what I'm saying? Because with that whole situation with Vaughn, you know, we already, everybody didn't heard what allegedly um, happened when Vaughn was living. Allegedly, Big Mike's supposed to toll on Vaughn or whatever, whatever. You see what I'm saying? But um, me, myself, personally, I don't know because I never really seen the paperwork or nothing. This is what I heard. So, but I basically kind of know it's a little bit of truth to it because Vaughn got out and Mike stayed in there. But by me going to jail and things like that, I know how that situation can kind of go. You can have a rappy and he basically can tell on himself or basically want to cop out for himself. You see what I'm saying? And that kind of implicates you. But if you don't say nothing, then he goes home and you stay in. 
because you shouldn't have opened your mouth. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know if it was that type of situation. I don't know if Big Mike just told the whole story. Him and Vaughn was the shooter or pointed Vaughn out or none of that. But the newspaper said that he pointed Vaughn out or something. Well, they called Big Mike and then allegedly told on Vaughn. But it didn't never describe really how he told on Vaughn, how they got on Vaughn. So with that being said, I want to see what Big Mike got to say about it because I never really fully looked at the whole Mike statement, the paperwork, or none of that. So at the end of the day, I want to see what Mike has to say about it, and then I want to see where he's going to go from there. You feel what I'm saying? But as of right now, this video right here it has nothing to do with whatever Mike did with him and Vaughn or nothing like that. Just my first impression of Mike since he's been out of jail, the first interview I've seen him doing, and the first time I heard him talking about um, either any situation from Old Block or any of that. You see what I'm saying? But, you know, we'll, um, we'll go from here and shit. But at the end of the day, one thing I can tell you, two things for sure, is um, this is an interview that, um, that I, that I kind of liked it because, you know, I don't really like interviews because it'd be too much cap on those interviews, you feel me? And I'm glad that Mike kept it real, and I'm glad we um, had to check out a video. Uh, 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 well, I was glad we was able to listen to a interview without all this killing and drilling and he four times and he'll do this and he'll do that. Shout out to my Vons, my Vonettes. We are the best. Y'all definitely know the rest. I'm out.